Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Halima Sadia. Tonight, we are inaugurating South Asian Literary Festival 2023 and first Nalanda Award Ceremony. So I welcome you all for this event. Let's stand for National Anthem of Canada. Thank you very much. This beautiful composition rendition is done by great musicians, Mr. Farukh Abid and Shoaib Abid. And keep continue standing to pay tribute to Indian national anthem to congratulate India and the whole South Asia for this successful mission to moon.
This beautiful rendition is also composed by Shuaib, Abit, and Farooq Abit. They are from Karachi, and and both national anthems are composed by those wonderful musicians and edited, choreographed by Awab Satar and Shivam Lakhanpal. And those are a tag TV production. A renowned poet Iqbal has said, Sare jahan se achha Hindustan hamara. And he further said, Mohabbat mujhe un javano se hai, sitaron pe jo dalte hai kaman. Now I ask Tahir Gora, the director and creator of Canadian South Asian Literary Festival and Nalanda Award to share us with his opinion about these ventures. Thank you, Halima. Halima and I had lived a couple of years in former Soviet Union. We lived in those parts of the world where Uzbekistan Writers Union, Kyrgyzstan Poetry Association, and Kazakh Writers League hosted us many times in their guest houses, which were situated on mountains alongside Amu River. I was curious to know from a famous Uzbek writer, Premikul Kadrov, and a well-known internationally acclaimed writer and filmmaker of Kyrgyz origin, Changez Atmatov, about literature written in context of new, evolving, post-communist societies. They always thought that 30, 40 years would take to reflect societal changes in their literature. However, I was touched to write on a multicultural mosaic of Soviet Union at the time where a Korean musician married a Cuban girl in Kazakhstan. I wanted to write a short story about a Ukrainian lady who was working for KGB who used to speak Punjabi and Persian fluently due to her KGP work in Afghanistan, she told me that she learned Punjabi from Pakistani ISI agents and Persian from Afghan warlords. After dissolution of Soviet Union, she lost her spy job. She joined a local small mafia, what we used to call in Russian Malinki Mafia. She was waiting for a Pakistani army general to whom she could have uranium deal and a potential affair. After all, she could speak Punjabi fluently. Before I could write such stories while living there, I had to move to Canada. I found Canada very fascinating society. It appeared to me more multicultural than the former Soviet Union. Soviet Union's multiculturalism was pretty much communist and Canada's multiculturalism proved to be very socio-capitalist. As, as a writer, I was treated well all across Soviet Union. As a writer in Canada, I was expected to drive a cab and work on an assembly line in a factory. I shared my sadness of being a writer in Pan Canada's office and in my emails to Writers Union of Canada and Canadian Journalists for Free Expression, Finally, I had to start driving taxi, and I met many wonderful poets and writers of South Asian origin who were also driving taxis. Pen Canada started a project called Taxi Project, based on the lives and writings of the members of Pen Canada's Writers in Exile program. The Taxi Project provided a glimpse into what it meant to be forced to leave one's homeland to start a new life in Canada. So, there were and are some writers who were and are struggling to maintain their literary life along with settlement challenges, and there were and are well accomplished and internationally acclaimed writers such as Michael Ondaatje, Rohintan Mistri, and M.G. Vasanji. Recently, I started pondering about who's a Canadian writer. I discovered hundreds of writers of South Asian origin who were writing in Punjabi, Hindi, Urdu, Bengali, Tamil, and other South Asian languages. 
they all are Canadian writers. Writing in English or French does not make someone a Canadian writer. A Canadian literary writer is any Canadian who writes literature. No matter what language one writes in, language written in any, literature written in any language by a Canadian writer is a Canadian literature. It is a part of our collective Canadian heritage. A dissident Chinese writer, Ma Jian, has stated that truth is under threat. Japanese writer Haruki Murakami warned against excluding outsiders. A renowned European novelist, Milan Kundera, feared that in a world in which people prefer to judge rather than to understand, literature surely creates an atmosphere to understand rather than to judge. Anita Rao Badami's novel, Can You Hear the Nightbird Call, describes the complexities surrounding Air India bombing. Shwana Singh Baldwin's 1999 novel, What the Body Remembers, won the Commonwealth Award. It has been translated into 15 languages. Michael Ondachi has published 13 books of poetry and over half a dozen of novels. He has won the Governor General Award, Giller Prize, Booker Prize, and several other prestige, prestigious awards. M.G. Vasanji has published nine novels, as well as two short fiction collections and two non-fiction books. Vasanji's writings, which have received considerable critical acclaim, often focus on issues of colonial history, migration, diaspora, citizenship, gender, and ethnicity. Rohintan Mystery has been the recipient of many awards. Each of his first three novels were shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Anush Irani has published four critically acclaimed and award-winning novels and several plays. The literature written by emerging writers such as Rupi Kaur, Sharon Bala, Sara Desai, Lily Singh, Ritu Behsan, Charlotte Gill, Samra Habib, Doyali Islam, uh, Sachi Cole, Sonia Lali, Rat Neville Roy, Shyam Selvadri, Shriya Vivek, Jaspreet Singh, Harjeet Dillon, Rajiv Surindra, Padma Viswanath, Tenaz Bathina, Sheena Kamal, Mr. H. N. Khan reveals the contributions of South Asians in Canadian heritage. We are celebrating many authors during this festival, including Ujjal Dosanj, Anuba Mehta, Ashwak Hussain, Irfan Sattar, Ajayab Singh Chatha, Subrata Kumar Das, Aruna Pep, Ishtiaq Ahmed, Hamid Bishani, Deeraj Sharma, and many more. Few words about Nalinda Award. Nalinda Award is an initiative of Canadian South Asian Literary Festival that would go to best fiction and non-fiction writers. The contributors of Nalinda Awards are of Bharti origin. They shall be establishing the value and the credibility of Nalinda Awards parallel to international awards such as Oscars and Booker Prize in coming years. The name Nalinda comes from the ancient center of knowledge from India. The, this award would consist of big dollars from 2024 20, and onwards. This award would be given to best writers, books, artists, films, music, and humanity service providers at global level, irrespective of race, religion, and gender. Stay, <laughs> stay tuned with us. Nalinda award, award shall be at next level next year and onwards. Before we start announcing awards, I shall introduce High Commissioner of India. So High Commissioner Sanjay Kumar Verma ji is kind enough to join us today. Thank you, sir. His Excellency entered into the Indian Foreign Service in 1988 he was stationed at the Commission of India, Hong Kong, and at the embassies of India in the People's Republic of China, Vietnam, and Turkey. 
Before serving as the Consul General of India in Milan, Italy, he also served as the Indian Ambassador to the Republic of the Sudan. Following, following his tenure in Sudan, His Excellency served as Joint Secretary and later as Additional Secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs, New Delhi. Before arriving in Canada, he served as the Ambassador of India to Japan. I request His Excellency, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma, to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Gora. Thank you, Madam Sadia, for conducting this event. First of all, let me express gratitude to Dr. Gora and his team for conceptualizing this very unique event. What is so unique about it? Whenever we are, as South Asians, Whenever we are judged, we would like to be judged by the people of our ilk, people from South Asia. Whenever we are judged by those people who do not know the depth of our culture, we feel something missing. Therefore, it is extremely important for all of us to be judged by someone who understands our culture, and therefore our literature. Literature is a reflection of the culture. And unless someone knows that I say no like this and yes like this, I may be misinterpreted. Therefore, I congratulate uh, Dr. Gora and his team for considering this very unique initiative in which South Asians will recognize South Asians. The, most of the events today that we see in the world are benchmarked. So someone is benchmarking what the hotel should look like. Someone is benchmarking what my suit should look like. Why shouldn't we benchmark what should be South Asian literature? And that is why this is such a unique initiative that jury of South Asian origin will judge what is the best of South Asian literature. I hope that this page marking will take us further and probably, I very sincerely hope that it could be a booker of South Asian literature in the future. The name given to the award, which is Nalanda Award, of course all of us know that it was the two of the most ancient universities in the world. Takshashila and Nalanda. But what we also need to understand that after it was raised twice to the grounds by those who did not like the knowledge that it had accumulated, it has come back again. And this time, the resilience of our people, the resilience of South Asia, the resilience of today's ambitious Indians have brought back Nalanda University to its original glory. We are receiving a very large number of students, not only from South Asia, but also from Southeast Asia. And hopefully we will be able to get many more students on purely educational basis and not as a business from all over the world to reestablish what Nalanda University used to be in our history. I congratulate Dr. Gora for naming this award as Nalanda Award because Nalanda reflects South Asia, Nalanda reflects the glory of South Asia, Nalanda reflects the accumulation of knowledge and skill. So thank you very much for that. Uh, the befitting name to this award fills my heart with joy and I wish you all the best for its future editions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for gathering around. Thank you very much for witnessing this unique experiment which Dr. Gora and his team has initiated. Thank you very much for being a part of it. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thanks. Thank you, His Excellency. 
High Commissioner of India, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma ji. Now I shall introduce India's newly arrived Consul General in Toronto. Mr. Siddhartha Nath is a career diplomat who joined the Indian Foreign Service in 2003. He has been posted in the Embassy of India in Beijing and the permanent mission of India to the conference on the disarmament of Geneva. Prior to his appointment as Consul General of India in Toronto, he served as India's Deputy High Commissioner in Singapore. At headquarters in New Delhi, he has served in the United Nations Division as Desk Officer for Afghanistan and Iran and in the National Security Council Secretariat in New Delhi. He served as Director in the Prime Minister's Office in New Delhi and then headed the Internal Finance Division of the Ministry of External Affairs. I request Honorable Consul General of India, Mr. Siddhartha Nath, to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gora. This is indeed a privilege to be here in this very illustrious uh, gathering of uh, some of the foremost writers and such, such highly skilled uh, uh, practitioners of the art. And it is indeed a historic moment for the reasons outlined by Dr. Gora in terms of the award and the ambition that we have. Uh, I'd just like to add one point uh, to all that's been said before. It is indeed fitting and uh, appropriate that this ceremony is happening in Toronto because Canada is home to such a large diaspora from the South Asian community and the literary outpourings from the community represent, as Dr. Gora said, not just South Asian literature or South Asian art, but Canadian literature and Canadian art and has global significance. So a special, a special congratulations uh, for, for the institution of this award and all the very best, uh, full support from us. Thank you. So Tahir has introduced uh, Nalanda Awards now, and it's time to announce Nalanda Awards. Our very first award is the best contemporary poet. Anybody can guess who it could be? So I would request Mr. Irfan Sattar to please come on the stage and receive your Nalanda Award. Thank you very much, Halima Saadia, Tahir Aslam Gora, for this honor. I immigrated to Canada in 2010, so it has been 13 years. And one thing which always pinched me was that even after coming from Pakistan to Canada, I am confined to the subculture of Urdu poetry and Urdu poets. Whereas living in a multicultural society like Canada, we should be able to gather colors from people writing Hindi Kavita, Punjabi poetry. They have their own sensibilities. I come from the traditional ghazal genre, which has its own structure and format embedded in Persian and Arabic. So we can create much more, I would say, deeper and more colorful literature if we interact more. And this is a fantastic opportunity. I congratulate Tahir and Halima Sadia for creating this platform. And I hope that this will not be confined to just one event per year or a couple of years. There should be a regular interaction between the uh, poets and uh, uh, writers of different genres, different languages, and from different backgrounds. And only then we can justify our contribution to the world literature while living in Canada. Uh, back in early 2000s, I went to Delhi and I brought back a collection of short stories from Indian regional languages. There were Marathi, Telugu, uh, Gujarati, Bengali, and all those languages. And I was astonished to read those short stories. And I always felt so sad that people living in Pakistan, writing in Urdu, have no idea how much the sensibilities have progressed and how many international colors have creeped into South Asian literature. So we should end it here. 
in Canada, we have this opportunity of intermingling, learning from each other, adding colors to each other's creative pursuits. So I hope that this will be just the beginning. And congratulations once again, Tahir. Thank you very much. Our next award recipient is Ajayb Singh Chattasa uh, for the best contributor for Punjabi language. Chattasa contributed for Punjabi language in terms of his a uh, compl completion of Qaeda al Noor books on Natikta and nine, uh, consec nine consecutive World Punjabi conferences in Canada. Thank you, Jita. That's a new one. Both, both. I don't know if I can get an award. This is very unexpected. जो भी कहते किसी विद्वान को किसी को जाना चाहिए हो जा कुछ सीख जाए जा कुछ सिखा जाए ये गल मैं कुछ चर पहला पढ़ी सी कैदा नूर वाली गल दूजिया वो गल फिर करा मैं अज लग रहा भी अपने एक इंसान जिंदगी जीवन लिये तीन चीज़ा चाहिए एक चाहिए पैसा दूजा चाहिए समा तीजा चाहिए एनर्जी जो तो बंद बच्चा हों ना जी वो को पैसा नहीं हों जो तो जवानी होंगी है वो समा नहीं हों जो तो बुढ़ापा हों को एनर्जी नहीं होंगी इन तिना तो बिना एक अधेड़ उम्र होंगी तो जिन्हें भी तुम सारे बैठे हो उस अधेड़ उम्र आए बैठे हो अधेड़ उम्र के हरेक दे पैसा भी हों हरेक दे समा भी हों हरेक को एनर्जी होंगी हैगी इस करके सारी स्पैशल इंसानों धनवाद जी दा आर नेक्स्ट अवार्ड गोज टू द बेस्ट ऑटोबायोग्राफर मिसिज अरूना पैप शी इज अ नैशनली एंड इंटरनेशनली रिकगनाइज एजुकेटर एंड एडवोकेट ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट्स शी फोकस ऑन वेमेन राइट्स इन क्रॉस कल्चर परस्पैक्टिव शी हैज रिटर्न एक्सटेंटिवली ऑन द इशूज फेसिंग इमीग्रेंट वेमेन इन कैनडा एंड कल्चरली रूटेड gender based violence i would request um, high commissioner sir to please come and give her the award i've only had one job for 43 years to work with women who are victims of domestic violence i write their stories because their voice cannot be heard they're dead their daughters are alive they need to remember their mothers were here for them for their lives as long as i live i will continue to write their stories so that we include them in the history of the south asian canadians i have helped hundreds of women maybe thousands in 43 years but there were some i couldn't save i remember them i write these stories not alone i pour them out on a piece of paper and then i hand them on to my husband david so this award belongs to him as well please stand david thank you for being my supporter my guide my helper thank you so my next award goes to research writer mr dheeraj sharma dheeraj sharma ji is a professor of management he has been director of indian institute of management rohtak since 2017 and is also a full professor on leave from indian institute of management ahmedabad in 2019 mr sharma received the educational leadership award for his work as director iim rohtak sharma has been conferred the award of global thought leader by the academy of global business advancement 
So the next award is the best Canadian Bengali writer. Canadian literature has been hugely acclaimed by the Bengali literature lovers living in Canada and Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, I really feel very happy that I have been given a reward, an award which is named after the great heritage of Nalanda. With the Bengali writers, we are very happy and grateful to the organizers of Canadian South Asian Literary Festival. A good number of Bengali writers are joining this festival and we hope that in the forthcoming years the number of the Bengali writers will be multiplied. We will not be here as the guests only. We will be a part of the organizers that we can work more enthusiastically, more actively and more profoundly. I believe this festival of Canadian South Asian literature will help the Bengali writers to make a better breeze with the writers of the other languages of South Asia. I believe this festival will help the South Asian writers to be in a better breeze with the mainstream writers of Canada. Thank you very much and thanks everyone. Our next award goes to the best Kashmiri author, Mr. Hamid Bashani. Barrister Hamid Bashani is a Canadian Kashmiri author of several, several non-fiction and fiction books. His analysis on tag TV shows, third opinion provides with a non-biased perspective of Kashmiri issues. His Uh, thank you very much. It's really my honor to receive such a prestigious award from such a prestigious organization. And I especially thank to Mr. Tair Gora and uh, other people who are working with the organization uh, to invite me for this event and give me such a big surprise. गोरा साहब ने मुझे कहा था कि आप कनाडा में लिखते हैं तो आपने एक्सपीरियंस के बारे में कुछ बताएं मैंने स्विच इसलिए किया हिंदी उर्दू कि यहां पे कम से कम 20 30 लोग मुझे मिले हैं जिन्होंने मेरी हिंदी उर्दू की वजह से मुझे बहुत अप्रिशिएट किया तो मैंने कहा कि ये उनका <laughs> तो उसमें एक्सपीरियंस ये है कि हम कनाडा में लिखते हैं लेकिन हम सिर्फ कनाडा में बैठ के लिखते हैं कनाडा के बारे में कुछ नहीं लिखते नथिंग राइटिंग अबाउट इट उसकी वजह यह है कि कनाडा में हमें कोई चीज इंस्पायर नहीं करती कि जब हम यहां पहुंचते हैं तो हम एक ऐसे सिलसिले से निकल के आए होते हैं कि कनाडा जैसा मुल्क हमें एक ऐसी जन्नत लगता है जिसके अंदर ऐसी कोई चीज नजर ही नहीं आती जिसको हम क्रिटिसाइज करें तो हमारी जो पर्सनालिटी बन गई है बेसिकली वो क्रिटिक की है क्रिटिक के अलावा हम लिख ही नहीं सकते तो कनाडा के बारे में आज तक मैंने को 10 12 ऐसे लिखे हैं या आर्टिकल या कॉलम्स इसके अलावा कम से कम मैंने को 2000 के करीब कॉलम लिखा होगा जो सब साउथ एशियन इश्यूज स्पेसिफिकली पाकिस्तान इंडिया पीस प्रोसेस वहां पे जो सिचुएशन है जो हमारा इश्यूज हैं डेमोक्रेसी सिविल लिबर्टीज और जो कुछ अभी रिसेंटली स्पेसिफिकली ऑन डीके एंड डिक्लाइन ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इन पाकिस्तान जो इशू चल रहा है इस तरह की चीजों पे तो मुझे लगता है कि हम ज़ैनी तौर पे अभी तक वही हैं हालांकि मुझे आए हुए भी को 20 साल हो गए लेकिन मेरे कंधे पे वही गटड़ी है जिसमें वहां के लोगों के जो दुख दर्द हैं जो मसائب हैं एंड सम टाइम अनएक्सप्लेनेबल किस्म की सफरिंग है जिसको कोई एक्सप्लेन नहीं कर सकता व्हाई वी आर सफरिंग व्हाई वी आर फाइटिंग व्हाई वी आर नॉट फॉलोइंग डेमोक्रेसी 
why we are not respecting human rights, civil liberties and things like this, which we are inspired in Canada so much, 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 so much. तो इस हिसाब से जो कुछ मैंने उर्दू में लिखा वो सब क्रिटिसिज्म है जो कि मैं समझता हूँ कि आने वाली तारीख का इंतज़ार करने की ज़रूरत नहीं चूँकि मेरी अभी जो बुक आई है तेईस ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ जुलाई को वो आज ही मैं मैसेज अपने एक दोस्त को दिखा रहा था कि वहाँ पे एक सरकारी कमेटी है जिसने बैठ के तो पब्लिशर को बुलाया कि आके हमें एक्सप्लन करो कि तुमने ये बुक जो है वो किस नीयत से छापी है विद वट इंटेंशन तो उसने मुझे मैसेज दिया कि ये कमेटी जो है वो बहुत ज़्यादा सीख पा है सीख पा का मतलब होता है रियली रियली एंग्री दैट वाई आई डिड दिस तो एक तरफ तो हमें इस तरह की सिचुएशन का सामना है जहाँ पे फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन ह्यूमन राइट्स और फंडामेंटल राइट्स को बहुत जो है वो सुप्रेस किया जाता है दूसरी तरफ कनाडा है जहाँ पे हम ढूंढते रहते हैं कि कभी कोई ऐसा इशू मिले और वो हमें नहीं मिलता तो हमारे कुछ ऐसे राइटर्स हैं जो यहाँ तो नहीं बैठे हुए इसलिए मैं कह देता हूँ उन्होंने जाके तो जो नेटिव इंडियंस में से कुछ इशू ढूंढ लिए हैं कि जी उनके साथ ये जुल्म हो रहा है हम अफसाना लिखते हैं इस पर या इस पर जो है वो कालम लिखते हैं तो आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल अकैन गोरा साहब Uh, really is a big honor for me and thank you very much our next award goes to best non fiction writer mr ishtiaq ahmed saab ishtiaq ahmed is a swedish political scientist and author of pakistani descent he holds a phd in political science from scott holmes university he is professor of political science uh, Excellencies, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Tahir Gora Sahib, Halima Ji, I am simply overwhelmed by this honor bestowed upon me, and uh, it's a vindication of. uh the type of work i have done and i remember mahatma gandhi saying that god is not truth truth is god and it's in that spirit and it it's in that spirit that some of my books have attracted a lot of attention i'll just would like to share with you some of the great surprises besides this one this very great honor that uh, recently my book on jena was published quite honestly it's a heretical book the way the founder of pakistan has been uh, portrayed in the official narrative leave no scopes to understand him as a human being human beings have great qualities they also have great failings and so i think there was the need for someone to step in and put the record straight and uh, although this book has caught the fancy of the people my greatest work actually the one i think uh, in which i have uh, done all i could as a human being to bring forth the truth which has been hidden suppressed uh, by all parties which were involved in the great murder of punjabis in 1947 so the book the punjab bloodied partitioned and cleansed uh, is the book i am told that once i am gone ye kitab aapki amar hai this is what people have been saying and i would like to uh, uh, just share my very recent experiences you see uh, on the 13th of 
January, I arrived in Lahore to take part in a, a literary festival called Think Fest. And my book, Jinnah, His Successes, Failures and Role in History was to be discussed. And obviously, the other side had prepared two of the best lawyers to do that. Salman Raja and Asad Rahim Khan. And you can well imagine that although I'm Lahore born and I had local support, but going on to the stage to defend your work with such a strong opposition, uh, I was very nervous, this I must admit. But it became a very civilized communication. Uh, they had their objections and I could give my reasons for the arguments and the evidence I had presented. And then I was in Pakistan for nine weeks. I addressed public audiences, 27 of them, Lahore, Islamabad, Sargoda, Karachi, Hyderabad, Sindh. And everywhere people were very eager to get a dissenting point of view on, on Jinnah. Yeah. And then I was invited by um, the Vasant Vakhyan Mala. It's an organization which for the last hundred years have been inviting people every year to make a keynote. And if I may brag a little, my predecessors included Mahatma Gandhi, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, Sardar Patel, and then for the 100th centenary year, they bestowed this great honor on me. And the topic which was given me was the tale of two friends lost in a fair. India, Pakistan, socio-political trajectories and how should they deal with each other. This subject was so close to my heart that uh, I was deeply touched, deeply moved by this invitation. And as soon as I announced that I'm coming to India, the number of invitations which came along took me to, 20, to 19 cities in India and I addressed more than 50 public audiences. So as far as the people of India and Pakistan and the rest of South Asia are concerned, they are heirs to a civilization where uh, although there have been periods of orthodoxy and dogma and so on, but these have been challenged all along. And we have the combined wisdom of the bhaktis, of the sufis, of the sons, of the jogis, and of the gurus. Uh, this is the feeling I got when I was in India, and this is the identical feeling I had in Pakistan. So insofar as the people of this region are concerned, I think there is nothing wrong with them. What we need is enlightened leadership. And my greatest hope is that this award that you have introduced, sir, becomes a model for us in South Asia to have something similar. Why can't we have a South Asian type of uh, uh, awards for writers and, and uh, people who contribute to human rights and so on? So I think Toronto wins the historic role of establishing a precedent which I hope will be followed also in South Asia. Thank you very much. So let's go and move forward towards our next award, which goes to the best novelist, Ms. Anoba Mehta. Anoba Mehta is a prominent Canadian novelist whose novel Peacock in the Snow is one of a kind in its genre-bending thriller about the power of an eternal love which survives through three generations of heartbreak across two continents. This was completely not expected. 
So I have nothing prepared. I'm going to talk to you from my heart, not my words. First of all, I think we are standing on crossroads right now. This today is the beginning of something new, a homegrown South Asian literature festival. With all you people here, your esteemed audiences, artists, writers, poets, your excellencies, I think we are a part of a movement. I think we are part of something big. And I congratulate you, Halima ji, Tahir ji, this is a great initiative and we have to take it forward. I have nothing to say about myself except that all immigrant stories, they all have the same themes. It is how we connect the dots and weave our patterns that make each of our stories different or unique. And I encourage everybody to write their stories because storytelling is much greater than the written word and it can translate into any form of art. I'm going to end with one poem that's coming to my head by Ajalaluddin Rumi. I know he wrote in 13th century, but I think it's very relevant even today. He says, the world is not how it is, but how we perceive it to be. It is not what we hear, but what we perceive we are hearing. It is not what we see, but how we perceive we are seeing it. And today, it is not how I feel, but how I perceive. And what I perceive is a lot of gratitude and love. These stories that I've written are not mine. I owe them to all the women who have contributed. And I have just been entrusted with their stories. I thank each and every one of those people who have walked with me to make my pages alive. Thank you so much. Let's move forward to the next Lifetime Achievement Award. And our award is for uh, Urdu Literature, Mr. Ishfaq Hussain. Mr. Ishfaq Hussain is a prominent Urdu poet and an author of more than 10 books of poetry and literary criticism. He has hosted hundreds of major literary figures from India and Pakistan. He has organized hundreds of events in Toronto during the past four decades. मुझे तो शुक्रिया अदा करना है इस तंजीम का जिसने अपने लिए वो नाम मंतखब किया है जो चिन्ना कुमारी से लेकर पिशावर और कराची और बंगाल तक जाता है जब हम साउथ एशिया कहते हैं तो दरअसल हम اسی طرح اپنا تعارف کراتے ہیں جیسے عراق میں رہنے والا اپنے کو عرب کہتا ہے سعود عرب میں رہنے والا اپنے کو عرب کہتا ہے اسی طریقے سے ہم بنیادی طور پر ہمارے اندر جو ہے ایک ہندستانی ساؤت ایشن ثقافت جو ہے ہم اس کے بانے ہیں ہمارے ملک الگ ہو سکتے ہیں جیسے عربوں کے بھی ہیں وہ بھی ہیں مگر پھر بھی ثقافت اپنی تہذیب ان سب سے ہم جڑے ہوئے ہوتے ہیں اب جو تقسیم در تقسیم عمل ہوا ہے اب ہماری ایک کوشش ہونی چاہیے کہ نفرتوں کی وہ دیوار جو ہیں انہیں ختم کر دیا جائے اور جو جہاں ہے مندر میں ہے مسجد میں ہے گردوارے میں ہر جگہ سکون سے رہے اور اپنے ثقافت کے ساتھ زندہ رہے یہ جو ساؤت ایشن تنظیم کا جو یہ جو اجلاس ہے اور یہ جو ایوارڈ دیے گئے ہیں اور لو دیے جائیں گے وہ دراصل اسی سمت میں ایک اہم قدم ہے آخر میں میں دو لائنیں پڑھوں گا یہ واغا بارڈر پہ میں نے لکھی اور دو شائری ہے رستہ ہوا یہ زخم ذرا سل جائے اس کا عنوان ہے واغا بارڈر ایک پھول محبت کا یہاں کھیل جائے ایک پھول محبت کا یہاں کھیل جائے رستہ ہوا یہ زخم ذرا سل جائے 
محفوظ رہیں سرحدیں دونوں کی مگر لاہور سے دلی کی گلی مل جائے بہت شکریہ اور میں خاص طور پہ شکر گزار ہوں اپنے دوست ڈاکٹر طار اسلم گورا کا جو خود ایک بڑے اچھے ادیب اور بڑے اچھے نسل نگار ہیں اردو تحریر ان کے سے گزرتی ان کا اور حلیمہ کا کا بہت شکر گزار ہوں کہ آپ نے مجھے اس قابل سمجھا بہت شکریہ دا بیسٹ آفر مسٹر اجل دسان جی فرسٹ آف آل فار اے کیڈ ہو گرو اپ ان دا ولیجز آف پنجاب ناٹ اسپیکنگ انگلش اسپیکنگ پنجابی تیرا کی حال ہے بھائی ادنا دی پنجابی اینڈ ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو انگلش اسکولس گوئنگ ٹو ریگولر پینڈو اسکول اینڈ دین کمنگ ٹو انگلینڈ ایٹ دی ایج آف ایٹین لرننگ انگلش لسننگ ٹو بی بی سی اور ریڈنگ فار می ٹو اسٹینڈ ہیئر اینڈ دین لک ایٹ دا ورڈ نلندا آئی تھنک اٹس اے بٹ آف اے کانٹروڈکشن بٹ آئی لو نلندا بیکاز اٹ سی سو مچ اباؤٹ ویئر وی کم فرام ہو وی آر اینڈ ہو وی شوڈ بی سو آئی ایم سو انڈیٹڈ ٹو تاہر اینڈ حلیمہ that they decided that I was worth an award like this. Um, uh, I'm a, I wrote my autobiography in 2016. Only did that because my wife got hold of Bob Ray, who happened to be at home, and took him into the study and, uh, and pulled me in. And the, both of them told me, put your bum on that chair and write your autobiography and um, which I didn't want to do because it's hard to write about yourself and um, I, after that I did um, online columns for Indian Express for a couple of years which sort of went by the wayside and there were novels kicking around in my head from the days I left India from the days I was in Britain for three and a half years And um, I started writing. I just wrote and wrote and wrote. And um, so now I have, this is my first novel that's been published. The Past is Never Dead. It's about an untouchable boy who travels to Britain in the, in the early 50s to the British Midlands. And what happens to him, how Goss follows him. I lived in Britain for three and a half years. And... Um, And uh, there, are, there are three other novels in the queue to be published. And, um, and one of them, um, that was about the immigrant life in Britain. There is one about the immigrant life in Canada. And um, there are many others kicking around in my head. And I'm actually amazed that it's happening, but it's happening because there's this woman who sits there She married me, decided to marry me, and let me stand up, stand up, come on, stand up. Um, she decided to marry me and, and stand behind me, and in fact, pull me with a rope around my neck to go wherever she thought I could go. So I always say, it's not someone that is behind you. behind every man that may be successful, not behind, sorry, in front of every man who could be successful, there's a woman pulling him by the neck or the ear. So thank you, and thank you very much, and thank you.